Why It Matters on Money FM 89.3. Good morning. Good to have you with me on breakfast. I'm Lin Li Fu. And on why it matters this morning, according to rating agency Moody's Investor Service, a higher proportion of women in the boardroom, the diversity of opinion they bring as being supportive of good corporate governance could drive higher credit ratings and stock returns for firms. In 2022, women held 29% of corporate board seats, up from 24% two years ago. But anecdotally, the stocks of companies with low female board representation have underperformed. With that in mind, why aren't companies having more female leaders at the top of the hierarchy? Well, in fact, many are leaving in recent weeks. The already underrepresented group of high-profile women leaders in tech has become even thinner. With YouTube CEO Susan Bocicki and Meta's chief business officer both stepping down from their positions in February. So in today's Mind Your Business, we speak with a Silicon Valley business journal woman of influence who has been breaking down barriers and driving inclusion in the tech industry. We will also discuss how she's working to promote diversity and inclusion in tech the ways generative AI is transforming cybersecurity and the impact of recent tech layoffs on the industry. She is Kavita Mariapan, Executive Vice President of Customer Experience and Transformation at Zscaler. Kavita, welcome to the show. Very good morning. Good morning, Lily. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor. All right. Um, a, a very quick introduction to your background. You were born in Malaysia, but moved to Australia at a young age. You grew up there and you completed your tertiary education. Now, how and when did you discover that you like tech? You know, I think um, tech was perhaps part of my DNA, perhaps part of, um, you know, the fantastic early education that I had um, in, in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, it was just very much part and parcel of, you know, both my, my wiring as well as I think my environment. But at the end of the day, you know, I was really inspired by my father. Uh, mm -hmm. My father, you know, is a uh, a scientist, a health scientist, um, and, you know, he really encouraged me uh, from a very young age here uh, as I was growing up as a child in Malaysia to pursue mathematics and science. And, you know, that just led me down the STEM mm. subject. I know, I know as, as, as Asians, math and science is something we mm. we always encourage our children to study. For me, you know, with that encouragement from my father, uh, the environment, it just, you know, it just became something that clicked. And then obviously growing up in Australia after that, I ultimately chose to study engineering at university. And, you know, I've uh, had close to three decades of uh, quite a, an exciting, dynamic and, and, you know, enlightening career journey, obviously early career in Australia. And then I moved to the Silicon Valley uh, 24 years ago. So uh, right in the heart of the Silicon Valley. Um, and I think it, a lot of this came from just my excitement of, uh, or, or like, uh, I would say, uh, inquisitive nature on how things work. Mm -hmm. Now, as a woman leader in tech and in Silicon Valley, no less, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges women face in STEM fields and how can they be addressed? You know, I think there, there are a multitude of challenges women face. And, you know, as much as things are, you know, definitely starting to improve, I think it really starts with sort of the early exposure to STEM education itself. Um, and I think in many cases, you know, uh, young girls view STEM education, whether it's, you know, core engineering or maths or sciences, it's one thing to study them at school. It's another thing to, you know, um, envision a career in that. And I think there's a little bit of a cultural, also gender, st gender stereotyping that occurs where STEM fields are often viewed to be masculine um, and, you know, teachers, the environment, uh, sometimes even family underestimate, mm -hmm. you know, girls, yes, you can go study that, but, you know, you really, do you really want to do that for a living, um, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's one. I think the other thing is just, you know, in some sense, male dominated cultures um, in, and, that create work environments that can be perhaps exclusionary um, and are not supportive uh, or attractive to, to women and minorities. And then I think the final thing, which you know, I focus a lot on personally, is role modeling. There are so few female successful role models. And Lily, congratulations looking at you, you know, congratulations for setting kind of that tone as well, right? Because um, role modeling is so powerful. Uh, when you know, girls and young women see other women who have achieved you know, a certain level of stature 
um, in, in all these different fields, it, it gives them um, it gives them hope. It gives them a journey, a path to follow. Um, so Thank you for that compliment. That. Yes, I, I really believe role models are very important. I have a, a young teenager at home too. Kavita, um, tell us about one career-defining moment. Wow, um, I've had many. I've been fortunate. I, I have to say, you know, part of my um, my philosophy is always be learning, be a continuous learner, you know, be it mm -hmm. as an individual contributor, as a leader, as a, you know, anything and any stage in our life, because I think those are what create these tectonic career defining moments. Uh, and for me, I think, you know, um, one of the most interesting um, uh, positions were uh, when I, two actually, I mean, one was when I went on to uh, lead go to market at a company called Databricks, uh, which is a startup and it's in a very established company right now. Uh, but mm -hmm. it was this challenge uh, to say, take everything you have and now go figure out how to open size, uh, 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 monetize open source, um, mm -hmm. open source software, right? Which is really like free. Um, how mm -hmm. do you go create these amazing business models? And I learned that, you know, in applying a lot of the things, my, my engineering, my financial, my go to market background, that um, you, it was a, an amazing defining unlock for me, right? That had this mm. this skill or this talent. Uh, and since then, obviously, you know, being able to apply that to uh, my time here in the cybersecurity uh, space here at Zscaler for close to five years, um, you know, the, it, it, these these have been very defining. The things that one doesn't think you can do, and mm. that you go create these amazing new markets. And, and, and open and foster these new avenues. There is also a program focusing on connecting, empowering and ele elevating women at Zscaler. Tell us more. Yeah, um, so we call this program, I mean, it's actually an employee resource group, a WISE, W-I-Z-E. Um, so women um, at Zscaler engage. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's really an employee resource group uh, folk, you know, led by our female employees. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I, you know, at the, you know, I guess the privilege of, of starting it uh, when mm -hmm. I first arrived wow. at Zscaler, I you know looked around and and you know I realized all these women were reaching out you know not within the, just the company but like externally um, because they hadn't seen a female leader and a role model like this and they had mm -hmm. a lot to share. They wanted a safe space. They wanted you know to uh, to ask about career and professional development opportunities. They also wanted to share you know broadly uh, feedback around hey um, mm -hmm. you know we. We need better tools and tips. We need mentoring and all of these. And so, you know, we, we it sort of helped set up the grassroots of this, but really let our women employees lead it. And I have to say, you know, it's been super gratifying to see it. And and five years on, we have six employee resource groups in the company, um, you know, all represented by uh, many other diverse and minority uh, groups as well. So one for veterans, uh, one for our Black employees at Zscaler, uh, one for our Latino employees, our LGBTQ uh, plus uh, community uh, and the list goes on. Mm. You've uh, managed and, and dealt with these women from across uh, demographics, across different backgrounds. What is that one um, big challenge, um, you know, a, a common challenge among all these women? You know, the common challenge I think, you know, women have uh, is first and foremost, feeling the confidence and having the mm. confidence to get a seat at the table. Right. Mm -hmm. I think with all the barriers that are put in front and, and some of them are um, inherent and I mean, some of them are there and some of them, I think, were just, um, you know, inherently believe also uh, for, for years of social conditioning that they're there. Um, and, and so both culturally and just, you know, not wanting to kind of just take a seat at the table. Uh, and, and, mm. and once we don't and we take a step back, then the environment treat us, treats us that way as well. Right. Mm. And, and so that, you know, trying to overcome that and and creating work, education um, and, you know, and all of those environments that actually recognize that. And and that's the big difference, Lindley, between the word equity and equality. Right. Mm. We all aspire to create a world that is equal, but not all of us are coming to the table with the equity. We have very different starting positions. Right. Mm. Whether it's economic starting positions, whether it's gender diverse starting positions, et cetera. So when all of us show up at work or at school, et cetera, saying, you know, you have to you have to hit that grade or, you know, you have to accomplish this and get the, you know, get to the next level in the promotion. It's the recognition that, you know, we're not all starting from the same place. And I think um, the other you know, aspect for us to be very aware of is 
we have biological differences that, you know, as women in many cases, you know, we uh, we become mothers at some point mm -hmm. in our careers that necessitate taking time off work, that necessitate, you know, child care uh, and all of those types of things as women were, you know, naturally care caregivers and carers. Um, and we need to ensure that um, the workforce, right, is is mm -hmm. appreciative of that and is making accommodations so uh, our, you know, women employees can can still perform, uh, but have those mm -hmm. accommodations made. And I, I always say this, you know, at the end of the day, this isn't a nice to have. When 50% mm -hmm. of the population, you know, and on average being women, are not working, are not being given those opportunities, we're not giving them an opportunity to participate in the global economy. We're inherently mm -hmm. taking economic buying power away from women. 50% of the population. Isn't it better for the economy when we all get to mm -hmm. play fair? Okay, coming back to that program you were talking about, it's really a very good program that supports women in te the tech in industry. So what benefits do such programs uh, provide to diverse leadership teams and how do companies promote and retain more women in leadership roles? So I think benefits to organizations, it's, it's you know, there's empirical evidence that when, when women um, one, as I said, you know, are, are given the opportunity that companies do better. First and foremost, diverse thought um, and, you know, diversity in the composition of an organization leads to better success, mm. leads to better, you know, uh, profit margins, um, leads to top line growth. Um, see, the, these are all critical, like empirical evidence, right, that um, it's, it's an advantage to the organization. And the other aspect of it is uh, women also are collaborators. Uh, they are multitaskers. So when you throw women into these leadership positions and management positions, um, you start to see a very different leadership style, one that is highly collaborative, one that is um, highly, you know, um, uh, bringing groups together. Um, and this multitasking capability also lends women in, you know, uh, puts women at an advantage when it comes to like highly uh, dynamic, hyperscaler growth, chaotic environments, you know, especially like if you look at IT, cybersecurity, this is like fast paced industries like finance, etc. Uh, these skill sets, you know, these um, not just the, the, the core um, subject matter domain skill sets mm. of however we're trained, but the EQ as well as these other attributes just, you know, set, um, set organizations that actually uh, lean into hiring women and, you know, and, and empowering women to be in these positions and encouraging them um, in, in, mm. in much better um, and I would say impact and outcome scenarios. Kavita, we have so much to talk about, you know, in terms of women in tech, but we're going to have to wrap things up quickly. But finally, a final question for you. What's your outlook for the tech sector in the coming years and what opportunities do you see for innovation and growth? Um, look, I think for me, I have uh, been in tech for 29 years. I've been in the Silicon Valley in the heart of, you know, uh, tech for the next, uh, for the last 24. I can tell you that it's a highly resilient um, industry and space. Um, I think the outlook, you know, as you know, we've, we've seen layoffs in the Silicon Valley and this sort of reverberating through the industry, but it's highly resilient. And I still see a very positive um, outlook, you know, despite all the challenges of the pandemic, et cetera, coming out, because at the end of the day, um, tech and innovation uh, play a tremendous role um, in, in forging, um, you know, the economy forward. And so uh, for me, um, I believe, um, there's no better time to be in tech um, than now. On that positive note, thank you very much, Kavita. Kavita Mariopan, Executive Vice President of Customer Experience and Transformation at Zscaler. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Money FM 89.3.